Um, yeah, oh, there you go. We're live as we're talking about uh, wildfires in, in uh, my own province, but that's fine. It's <laughs> okay with a bang. <laughs> yeah, where I'm at is super hazy. Yeah, we're pushing that all down towards you. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, but the other day I was actually like talking to someone in Maryland and they're like, yeah, we're getting all your smokes. I'm like, well, we can take the smoke back and then we'll send you the snow in the winter. <laughs> it's like, no, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. Here you go. I shared the, the tweet that it's live. Oh, yeah, good. Sure. Yes, and I'm making sure it's not set to private as it usually is. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? I think, yes, good. So, uh, yeah. good day world. Welcome to Be In The Moment. We are here live together having our Sylvain and Rory and Ray tutorials, tutorials, <laughs> tutorials. So we'll get some logos and um, jingles soon. Uh, but we just want to say welcome to join us. You know, Ray has accomplished something great as ever. She's always accomplishing great things. But most recently, while exhibiting at the GDEX conference in Columbus, Ohio, Shout out to the Buckeyes up north. Uh, she did Great. release her uh, generative NFT game, mollymatch.com. Thank you, Ori. <laughs> I think you've been here through, through the whole thing, you know, like it's, it's been uh, what, a year ago since I started, you know, since we started that. Um, exactly. But yeah, so now you guys are actually the first two that own two cats. Uh, oh a pair God. of them yeah so I, i'm excited to, when we um enable that uh matching feature for you too <laughs> oh right yes me too so um i would love to show my mollies is that okay I'll yeah that's okay me. so with molly match i remember rachel uh, Ray, you know, back about a year or more ago, you had set up the Discord. And I think we'll probably yeah. visit your Discord today. And then we uh, learned about your concept. You were going to make a kind of cat mating game where <laughs> the cat picture was a generative NFT. So people could adopt cats and then they could uh, mate them to foster traits that they desired, hopefully. So there's the game of chance. You have the concept of DNA plus the game of chance within the DNA of the NFT. And then with the mating of these cats, you can see what happens, what outcomes occur from the matching. So is that right? Yeah, you got that right. That's perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> So where did you get this concept? How were you first inspired? Um, I'm a cat person. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of people are. So like we were, when we were at GDEX, um, my, so my daughter was with me, she's eight. And then um, she was coming up with ideas for, um, I mean, even like in the beginning of the process of this game um, with uh, what kind of things they can do. And so we wanted to add um, abilities, like magic abilities to them. But um, the thing is, is, like, people just like cats. We, you know, I had people come up to our table and I'm like, hey, do you want a cat? And they're like, yes. <laughs> and so that's how we got a lot of signups um, there at the table. And, um, you know, like uh, everything else, you know, is just uh, extra credit, you know, with like telling them that it's on a blockchain where um, it's something that will never go away and that they'll have that cat forever. Um, so, you know, that's what it was. I, uh, besides liking cats is we, uh, I wanted to learn how to program. Um, and that was, that was a bit, you know, the big dr driver for me. Um, all of it's Python. So it's uh, a little different compared to, um, I would say it's actually kind of harder because you have to run all that stuff on the back end on a server compared to JavaScript where you can kind of just throw that stuff in and then run your site pretty quickly. Um, but I would like to say this site is um, 
pretty stable, you know, like, because we, we spent, a, that's a lot of the time we spent on was making sure everything, um, nothing got lost. Um, especially, uh, we, we, like uh, last night, uh, Sylvian was uh, going through the purchase process and we had a little bug with uh, PayPal and, um, and I'm really happy that he tried that because I, you know, I, I, the, the problem with that is like, I launched a, uh, a script to create some, I think like, I think 10 cats and that messed something up. So he was in the back of the line to get his, you know, his, uh, his cat. So we, uh, had to fix that but but yes yeah, so like now you guys have some cats and what kind of cat did i give you i forget worry it was oh uh, yes what color is it oh gosh well my first yeah, cat ever. in that kitty corner <laughs> kitty corner. <laughs> corner this is at mollymatch.com so you've all you've, you've done all of it in uh python then you're saying yeah, Python. So we use the, the Jingo um, web, web framework um, that, you know, really helped us out setting up, um, you know, the user profiles and stuff. Um, okay. We, the the biggest, like, uh, thing for the payment, um, we kept going back and forth. Like, we really, you know, we, we really need hand cash on here. Um, but we wanted to do PayPal also because at the at this GDEX convention, um, most of those people already have PayPal on their phone. Um, oh, yeah. and so last year when we were there, I, I did have, I think two signups for hand cash wallet. Um, but the problem with this convention is a lot of people have, um, they only have a certain amount of time to kill. So like they, they sign up for board games to play and, uh, they only have like maybe, you know, 20 minutes to stop by my table before, you know, happen to leave. So, I was like, well, we need to get PayPal up and um, so people can buy them. And so we had a couple, you know, purchases that way, which, you know, because they wanted two cats. So they, they got one, you know, one for free and then they wanted a pair. So they ended up buying another one, which is, I was really excited mm -hmm. about that. Fantastic. But yeah, you that got your orange okay cat. With not the first customer. I thought maybe he was the first. <laughs> well, he's, he's the first, I would say, like after um, we did a lot of fixes. So, we at the convention we um we saw some stuff that we needed to change um and then I, I, after sylvia and then we had more stuff we had to change you know so there was a lot of yeah. um updates to the server while you know doing that um the one thing i'm really kind of I, i'm proud of is the um, i don't really how to explain it but it, we use something called celery and that helps with job processes so Ooh, celery, um, like it's called celery. Yeah, I think it's. I don't know if it's an AWS thing or um, something else, but um, say like you, you know, so you buy a cat, but something happens, something breaks. Um, so this program will help. It will kind of like hang there and keep trying and until we tell it, you know, or unless we tell it to stop at a certain amount of time. So um, stuff never gets lost. We just um, and the other the other thing too is we have um, a pretty good log set up um so we could you know uh like last night we found that problem pretty easily because of you know going through the logs um but it's a lot of you know trial and error um my cat is behind my monitor so i'm just just in case it's like shaking she just decided to jump up here <laughs> yes this is multi <laughs> We have yeah, and so these, and so the artists, cats. the artists of these cats, um, we they look kind of big. Uh -huh. That's because of Kelly. Kelly's uh, a mean coon, and oh, yeah. oh, one of the biggest cats or house cats. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> kind of yes. massive. I've got to <laughs> screen big. Let me see. Oh, she jumped. Yes, yeah, well, she that's <laughs> the thing with cats. Yeah, or, yeah, you have to be on their schedule to exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, to definitely. Them. <laughs> wow. So, so you so have great. to. Are you a cat person too? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I always <laughs> love cats, but you know, I also have a puppy. He's he's crazy. He's a Boston Terrier. Um, because I it I'm just I guess it's because I grew up with animals, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. I, I would say the cats are my favorite just because they're easier to, <laughs> you know, take care of too. And yeah. Um, but he, uh, they they now start uh, playing. They're play fighting a lot. But um, he messes up her her fur so much where it's like matted. <laughs> so I'm always having to like wipe her down because he he gets really you know slobbery. But um, he's a crazy. Yeah, guy. I love he, cats he broke his and leg dogs together. Yeah, and, I mean, <laughs> they're, so and it's they're about the same size now. Um, mm -hmm. He he's very, I would say like he's very dense where he puts his weight on her 
to, you know, when they, when they fight. So she gets very mad. Um, but yeah, like recently he broke his leg and I had to go, um, take him to go get surgery done. And I had no idea he broke his leg. He just was limping a little bit and the, the vet thought he, um, sprung it. And so I took him in and they did an x-ray and complete fracture. And then he went in that same day and had to get like a metal plate put in. Oh my um, gosh. And, and Boston Terrier. Yeah. And then yeah. so uh, the, the the funny thing is like the vet said he would, or the surgeon said his leg would be like twice as strong compared to what it was before because of the metal plate. And I'm like, I should put another, <laughs> you know, play in his other leg because I know he's going to probably break it again. Yeah. Because he, he jumped a lot. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so so you have a, a Greek cat named Packers. Uh, I do. I, I want to give a shout out here. We got OG Keck Nine in the house. He says, Molly's will cover the planet. <laughs> <laughs> He's a prophet. He's a prophet. Yeah. Yes. So um, I love my Molly's. These are my Molly matches. This one is Baba. And I love this one. This is the boy because Baba is dad in Chinese. So I think that's perfect. I just love him. And you want to know has... about the about his name too, though. So my daughter yeah. named him Baba. Um, she... there's, uh, there's a show called Puff and Rock, and there's uh, an Una and a Baba. <laughs> but Is I like that there... too. That's funny. Wow. Yeah. So well, she tell her tell my dear um, <laughs> that that I love it, and I just absolutely love this Baba cat. And then also, let me go back to where I was screen sharing. Then, then you see mine there with my. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's another way to display it. <laughs> let me see. I can't see you just this sec. I'm going back now. This is Packers. Oh yeah, Sylvain, I see yours now. I'll try to yeah. post some of the links in the oh, chat cute. too. So it was a uh, Agent Fifi, whatever the name is. Fifi, <laughs> yeah, you need name of Fifi. Fifi. I think oh, my, yeah, my but, daughter named it Fifi. <laughs> but I guess you can rename it. So uh, yeah. So YouTube. So yeah, you guys have a girl and a boy. Um, yeah. And so the interesting thing about these cats is like when you scroll down, you see some you see some JSON code because we we we're gonna um, we're gonna clean that up where um, I think we're gonna have like little pixel icons to show what you know what it is just to make it look a little bit easier to read um, mm -hmm. and. So like with Packers, um, you have like the, this is base color orange. Um, that's like the body color. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the very bottom, you see that there's a link to a TX ID that takes you to yeah. what's on chain. Um, and so, you know, so, so okay. as you can see, like yeah. uh, with the, yeah, there you go. So if you scroll down to op return um, through the three outputs on the right hand screen, Mm -hmm. there will be some, you'll see something's familiar. So if you click on that little, yeah, on the drop down arrow, mm -hmm. um, on the, the very, this. The, yeah, this, uh, the opera turn. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you'll see the same code, um, the JSON data. And if you see where it says gender and it says the, the, yeah. if I'm saying that right, aliens. Um, uh, yeah. And so you have male and female and the phenotype is, one so you that one's a female um and then if it said zero it would be a, a male um so this is where people kind of um i, I don't want to say game the system but you can kind of get an idea of how many types of traits are out there um because when you have your molly on on molly match you don't see all of this data you know you just only see what your cat has you know be, what it became um there's you know uh there's dominant and um recessive you know traits so the very bottom you see like there's the color pink that's the i would say like kind of the rarest color um mm. i think we have one pink cat so far wow that, um that's, out, that's out there pink. Uh, not all pink though like so it that one has i think it's the so the body color like the base color is pink and then it has um i think like yellow spots on it um but yeah there 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 is some cats that actually have um there it's all yellow but it's really interesting how how that became because the the uh, the stripes are yellow like it's a striped cat but you wouldn't be able to tell that unless you look at the the uh, the traits um, so like there's a, a green cat I think up um, yeah uh, called Mean Green that's up for sale and uh, he let's go to the market let me take a look yeah if you go to adoption 
Oh no, he's he's not on there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sour lemon. That's one of the cats. So that one's all yellow. But if you scroll down and you can see that it actually has a fur pattern of stripes. Um, okay. And then it has a uh, the stripe colors yellow. So you know it's actually not a you know a I would, so it's not meant to be a solid yellow cat, but it just happened that way. So, you know, like the stripes could have been like a different color, but that's that's how it was was created when um, they were generated. Um, the other thing, too, about the cats that you guys own and that the ones that the ones that are available right now, they're we call them the Genesis cats because these cats don't have parents. These cats are kind of like Adam and Eve, you know, they're just kind of created. Um, eventually, ah. these cats will be hard to find. Um, because right. yeah, so once we get the mark, the, the matching up, um, people are going to start mating these cats and, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where the fun kind of happens because you're going to see people try to, um, control like what traits they want to see. And, you know, so like, like the pink collar, that would be pretty hard. You would have to have, um, two cats with some pink collar in it to, to try, try to bring that trait out. Um, in mm -hmm. your in your kitten that you create, um, I think the most common color is might be green. So because you, you see, you probably see a lot of green and yellow cats. Um, yep. But someone could you know uh, buy all of those cats and not mate them, and then make it so those genetics are hard to find. You know, so ah. instead they could artificially create like make pink as a as a um, more common color. Um, so it, yeah, I kind of want to see what people do. It'd be, you know, there's <laughs> yeah. So it's about how people play with the game mm -hmm. that can control the outcome. It's like natural selection, but also with kind <laughs> of gamer strategy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well, we um, there's gonna be a lot of changes. Uh, yeah, we got cute whiskers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Sylvain, how about can you share your screen and then we'll see your cats next. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me... I just want to say this one is unique. I haven't seen these curly whiskers before. Mm -hmm. And also that grill. Look at that grill. <laughs> what a cutie. And it's like these little splotches look like green clouds. And I wow. think there's. I um, love these cats. Three whiskers. And Erdy. Okay, sorry, I'm getting carried away. Uh, I'm, uh, I can share mine if you're ready. Yeah. Okay. I, I like know. the yeah, that's my favorite color, the red and yellow Go ones. Go ahead, Sylvain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's um, um three whisker traits or whisker types. There it is. Right. I'm taking a look. I okay. think we're just yeah, the window. No, there's there there's go. five whiskers. Sorry. All right, so then <laughs> there they are. Barbecue <laughs> and Fifi. <laughs> Barbecue. Oh. I oh, came up with that the, name, Barbecue. <laughs> that's the one that was caught up the uh, the PayPal. Cube. Yeah, that's when you got it last night. That is yeah. cute. <laughs> I gotta make my screen big so I can. And then, see as people it. can see, like it says, rename above um, his handle. You can, you know, rename your cat if you wanted to. Okay, um, we need to. I don't know. Then, it's just auto generated. Okay, so you could change <laughs> that to whatever. Yeah, you can change it to whatever name you want it to mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Um, I thought that would be more um, just to make it more personal. Um, and mm -hmm. that was a hard like choice too. Cause I'm like, do we want, cause we, I was like, do we want the name to be on chain? Um, and then I decided, I was like, no, let's have it where people can actually change, change their cat's names to make it more personal. Um, you know, That's hold on true. for them. Cause sometimes one pet in real life will have many names over its lifetime. Yeah. As the owners change even. So Sometimes. just a quick question on, on this here. So I'm assuming it, they're kind of auto generated or whatever through like the codes. So mm -hmm. is that displaying all like possible options? And then essentially we're going to have a, like a true or false, depending if they're popping up as like pink or whatever, like, cause there's pink in that, or is it just for this specific one? Like, is it good? So that's for, it? for all of them. So you kind of see all of the traits that your cat could have been. Um, okay. There, uh, but we, <laughs> this is something I can reveal. Like we, we will be adding other stuff. So like, um, yeah. we will be adding, I think the color black in there. Um, and then the other thing too is, uh, the muzzle color. So like their, <clears throat> their mouth and nose, that's there. There's a section there that can be uh, filled in. Um, yeah. and that's something I can talk about too. So the cat picture is not on chain. Um, the reason why 
is because there uh, there's going to be stuff added to it, like the background. Um, uh, we we have a game that we're working on for that, and that's that's why we decided to not put them up on chain because we you know we want to add um, special things to them. Like you can collect items down the road, and then that will yep. show up. Um, the kitty corner will be a little different for you later too. It's more it will look kind of like a um, like a little home base for your cats, and then you'll see you know oh, like okay. the items you can add to it. But you know you know it's it's. Uh, we just had stuff come up and I, I really wanted to get this game or get Molly match out so that people can at least have their cats. And then um, I got, you know, to get some feedback and see what to change before I really, before we get, you know, really deep into like the gaming part. Um, and then, you know, uh, so far stuff's, you know, working pretty well with, uh, but, you know, people being able to hold on to their cats. And um, I'm really, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Like, there's nothing like terrible, like nothing crashing or, you know, with mm -hmm. the, with the data. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, the big, the other thing too, is like, you know, we, we rely on um, some Python libraries um, that one of the big ones is, you know, what's on chain. Um, the other one is BitSV. BitSV is, um, it helps us create the, the wallets. Um, we had them so bit uh, yeah, sorry bit sv is no longer maintained it's um uh the person that created it they just they put it up but you know there's no more updates to it so we had to make a fork of it so that we could add some changes where um we could have like multiple private keys um cuz uh, the original library you, you couldn't do that um you know so i'm you know like i i'm glad this stuff you know is out there but i'm also kind of worried like what happens if something you know is changed or whatever and then we would have to, um, you know, find find another option. Um, uh, the other thing too that we found out, and that is, uh, Sylvan kind of showed us um, last night, where uh, when we hit uh, the what's on chain API, when we're um, generating cats, yeah. and if I'm doing it too fast from one wallet, it will it will kind of be like, what are you doing? Why are you trying to, you know, hit this API so so much? So um, we we had a, a we found out that we need to have like multiple wallets for for the cats. Um, we like to call these wallets the uh, the Molly Fund bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's where the cats are born from. Um, I think there are right now. I think there's six wallets, and that's something like you can actually look at on on what's on chain. Um, if you're really you know yeah. it, it, for people who really really want to track these cats down, that's the way to do it. You um, look at you know find out what wallet address it's coming from, and then um, you can see how many cats actually exist right now that's you know out there um and then the uh your thing too i can show you some of the cats that are not on the site yet um let me share my screen yes, for that <laughs> and ray is the bit sv resource is that bitsv.com or um let me i can grab it for you Real quick. Uh, I thought initially you said BSV, but it, yeah, I know probably... it sounds like I'm saying, but yeah, BSV. It's a uh, bit yeah, SV, yeah, SV something like that. Yeah, yeah. By uh, same thing is Austin. <laughs> Did you hear Kelly? So She's funny like, to hear your what is it, Cancun? <laughs> what do you call it? That's her. She's a Maine Coon. Maine Coon. <laughs> Coon. <laughs> Maine Coon. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah. 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 She's yeah, she um, timing. She's trying to be more talkative, but the reason why she's doing that is because she she brought a straw up, and she wants me to throw them for her to like fetch because she like that's her favorite game. Yes. <laughs> oh, speaking and she, of fetch, how about the, the world where Molly's Molly's will play, and then we mm -hmm. can decorate and buy props and toys and things for our cats. Yeah, that's actually something we, um, that was one of the first things that we talked about with um, creating the game um, where you have, yeah, like a little, like I call it like a home uh, or a landing page. Mm -hmm. And um, if you've ever heard of it, there's a game called Neko Itsumi um, that, you know, I didn't really think about that, but that's like a, it's a collect cat collecting game. It's, it's really cute. It's just like this little picture of um, like an outdoor area and an indoor areas. And then you would have like a bunch of cats just kind of sitting around in your, your house. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and then you can buy items and food for them to, um, to you know, try to attract more cats. Um, it's kind of like that. But um, the w one thing I too is like, I, I like how, especially with BSB, um, 
there, it brings in a lot of artists. Um, so I, I hope I may, you know, like I can, um, other artists would be, you know, excited to create some items and have their okay. stuff in our, in our little world. Um, you know, in one way to kind of, you know, talks. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to do something like that. Um, I mean, there's just so many different, you know, like there, there are so many options of what we can do. And it was just like four of us. So, <laughs> you know, we have, we have to kind of like calm down and, and pick what we, uh, you know, want to work on. <laughs> yeah. Step by step. Yeah. We got it, girl. Cool. Well, yeah, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what's to come. Yeah. Make sure I'm logged in. Oh, I um, see the GitHub link. I'll so yeah. So that's banner. Yeah. So that's bit SB. Um, I actually I should post the the fork that we made. Yeah, that. that's cool. Let me find. I it remember here. you talking about forking the GitHub, and that was really yeah, interesting. that whole concept. Um, that was when you were a guest in the early yeah. days of be in the moment. That was a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then even way before that, when you premiered with your team. I yeah, that was great. There we go. It's, so yeah, we call it we, uh, the Beryllium team because we're a team of four. It's based off of um, like an element. <laughs> oh, Neo, yeah, earth, fire, wind. Okay, water. let me yeah. find. Okay, Art. so let me make sure I'm <laughs> logged into the right account. All right, I'm following it. <laughs> You'll probably be the first one. Oh, so yeah, many, like, you're the pioneer. Yeah. <laughs> thinking about today, I was also thinking about the concept of tinkers. Just mm -hmm. overall, like the past few weeks, looking at the news and the Bitcoin world and the world itself, and then the BSV blockchain world, it's as though... Uh, with ordinals and all the activities with what ordinals mappy or map map ordinals dot map um, just so much that's happening with molly match even with hand cash and the coom battle game mm. uh, it's like we're all tinkers or you guys are all tinkers and i'm just looking at all the tinkerers and saying, wow, mm -hmm. look at these bold tinkers. <laughs> so I think that's a really big part of this scene is that everybody here is a tinker, which would be like a, an engineer, a builder, a scientist, um, you know, maybe an, an artist who's making something on the, on the leading edge. So that's, that's how I feel about like what you're doing, Ray. And, and also, OG Keck Nine and so many of your friends like the Twetch and the Ordinals and the it just the list goes on and on. You know, there's a lot to catch up on. Yeah. So, but let so, oh, yeah. oh, are you able to see the screen? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so here okay. is yeah. the yeah, this is the adoption page where there's cats for sale. Um, and then I'll show off some cats that are kind of waiting. Um, so I'm clicking on Kitty Corner. There's some stuff I'm going to change where, because um, right now all these cats are, they say they're owned by me, but they're not, you know, really. It's, um, we, that's something I got to change with that. But here are some of the cats that we generated during um, G Dex. You got seven. Wow. You're quite a cat lady. Really. <laughs> and then yeah, here are some of the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny, like, oh I didn't, there's God. no pink came up. So I, I was kind of hoping like one of the pink cats would show up. Um, I like the blue and yellow. Those were cute. <laughs> but so like, I'll click on this. Oh, one. I do like that blue and yellow. Cute. Yeah. And it's a girl. Yeah. It's a nice. Uh, and this one I can, pink. yeah, I can put it. Which, which should I name it? <laughs> yeah, let's think about it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Blue. Uh, so it's blue. Let me go back and we'll look at it again. This is blue. It has like a kind of frowny face. The, um, oh, yeah, it's an avatar. It has like the, the characters oh. in blue. Yeah, it has avatar, but I don't know. I like that. Me. Okay, making sure I'm on the right page. <laughs> oh, right. What was that avatar's name in the movie? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. The James Cameron movie? Let me look. 
Yeah, I don't know. They just they have such personality. I remember in the first few uh, podcasts and live streams that we did about Molly Match, you showed us a lot of the work of the artwork and how it was evolving. Mm -hmm. And I think that the way you brought it together, I'm really impressed. I think they're more uh -huh. cute than I've ever seen them. Because well, I think at first they were kind of rough looking. <laughs> yeah, so the art, yeah, the artist, she was, I'm going to call this one Avatar. Um, the artist that made these, she, she's, kind of said the same thing like uh she made like the first you know round where the, the line art um I think was a little bit more you know like finer looking and then she really wanted to change that so yeah that's these are the the new set of cats which I think would be you know be kind of fun to kind of like sneak some of the older cats in just to, you know as a special thing <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other thing too is um I'm gonna say this word wrong um polydactyl or with, oh. uh, you know, there's cats with like multiple, like more than oh, right. Um, They've got the what is it? Five, yeah. So we have mm -hmm. cats like that. Um, they're not here yet, but that will be another trait that you'll like. If actually, if you look at the JSON code on on what's on chain, you'll see. Um, they'll say toes. Um, mm -hmm. and right now, like you're, you know, you're not going to see any cats that have that extra toe, but that that will happen down the road. <laughs> Nita, yeah. Nice. yeah, I knew someone that she had the extra. Extra power. Yeah. And I think it was from um what is it, Ernest Hemingway or is it author? Um and they so there's actually cats on uh Key West there the in Florida. There's a, really? a really cool there's a house that you could visit of this author, and they have cats there that are only you know those type of cats. Really? Um, I think that is yeah. Hemingway. And you're not allowed to take them or anything, you know, because mm -hmm. they said that would mess with like the the wildlife or something or like the population, because it's like a you know it's a it's like a trait where, you know, if, if the cats <laughs> have kittens and you have all these you know cute little kittens with extra toes, um, but yeah, it's kind of funny that that uh, that was brought on by an author of uh, that you know d decided to live there oh, and have all these cats. Really, so he bred <laughs> the cats. Yeah. Right, like like the queen, the late queen, she bred horses. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Hemingway bred cats. <laughs> wow, that's funny. And six digited cats at that. Yeah. Right. Oh, look at that yellow and pink. What is going on there? What is that? Um, which one am I looking at? Like Butter, Buttermon? Bert, Bertel? Bert, Bert's Lemon. I think that, oh, that's the one my, my daughter named. <laughs> yeah, this one's a girl. Um. And yeah, oh, so the one thing I didn't mention is a little, little like, thing. yeah, the little thing. Yeah. Um, we will have some cats that will have collar on this area around the, mm -hmm. the nose and their mouths. Um, yeah. yeah, like, so you'll, yeah, the next thing we're doing is we're gonna make um, like a like a pop-up modal. So instead of clicking purchase down here, mm -hmm. there's gonna be a button up here and that that will make it a little bit easier, especially on, on, your, on your cell phone um, when you're trying to buy them. Um, cause right now it's, it's a bit of a, uh, process for that. It's like, if I click on purchase, it just takes you to this and then you got to go through, um, you know, like PayPal. making that make sure the, the, cause the page will have to go out to PayPal. And so that mm -hmm. that's, you know, that that's kind of the old thing, you know, a lot, right in, in a lot of places now where you just, it just auto updates in front of you. You don't have to leave leave the page to, you know, to buy an item. Um, so that's what we're working on next. Um, mm -hmm. And then adding, you know, hand cash back in there. So people will have the choice between um, using uh, PayPal or hand cash. Great. Um, and yeah. with hand cash, is the documentation sufficient for you to add it already? Or yeah, absolutely. They, they, um, they did a lot of um, work on that um, within the, the, you know, probably I would say maybe six months ago or so. Mm -hmm. a bit longer than that um so they have different they now have different options on um on how you would integrate that so it used to be just uh what's it called hand cash connect um mm -hmm. you would have have them you know connect to your or log into your site through hand cash um now you can do other things where you can um just you don't have to put that part in you can just kind of capture that that click while the person's logged into their their molly match account instead yeah um, and that's what I want to do. Um, 
So I'm excited about that because there's a lot of people that um, they they are waiting on on the hand cash to be enabled to um, purchase the cats. Ah, okay. And, well, yeah. Now it looks like already on mollymatch.com that I can use my credit card if I wanted to be civil mm -hmm. as yes. just to type in the info. Yeah. And how is that for security? I remember you said you went to great lengths to ensure that the website itself had a good security structure. Yeah. Um, well, uh, most of that's pay, you know, that's PayPal. So you would have, you know, if you trust PayPal, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've used had PayPal forever, like ever since I had a computer. Um, Did you? But I, a lot of people don't like it. One thing I'm actually worried about is like people can um, request refunds. <laughs> or, with you know, yeah, with PayPal for these cats, I think. Wow. So um, I'm, you know, that this probably like eventually we'll get rid of that. But mm -hmm. right now, you know, I wanted um, I wanted people to have the option at, the, at that convention. Um, and oh, yeah, I'm really curious. Right. Yeah, it's curious. There. yeah, do the refund. But um, yeah, that's I guess that's the perk for, you know, um, for people who want to go, you know, like that. Uh, I guess like they don't trust, you know, a site. Um, they could exactly. do a refund. But um, with Siki, like we don't have to capture that type of information where, um, you know, we can't see your credit card or anything. The only thing we see is um, I forget what it's called, but it's like a an ID number that um, connects you to. So I can look at my my business account to see the the error logs. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, it, mm -hmm. I think it's it. The PayPal side it, it saves that information like your email like who 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 bought the cat. Um, on our side, you know, like with hand cash, we do want people to be able to be anonymous if they wanted to, um, you know, so they can you you know use hand cash and just have that handle instead. Um, but that will be. I think we're we're trying right now. We're trying to enable um, the matching first so that we can um, you know see how that goes when um you know multiple people do this at the same time mm -hmm. um and then we'll add hand cash because i know that's when everyone's going to want to start you know using the site more um but i also want to make sure you know like like sylvia last night you know uh, came up you know, found found a bug <laughs> and yeah. so um i want to make sure the the matching um works well and because what happens is matching ties in with uh uh transferring volleys so once we get that enabled people like you um like sylvian and worry can um send each, you can send each other your mollies if you wanted to um and the other part is the market so like you can put your molly up for sale and then that will transfer over whoever that you know pays the price it's um whatever price you decide to set um so we want to make sure that that's the you know that part works good i that it's funny thing is like that stuff was built um kind of in the beginning so that it's already there um <coughs> But yeah, the biggest thing I'm worried about is like what happens when, you know, like there more than one person uses this at the same time. Um, oh, right. You know, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> Especially when we have uh, hyper Bitcoinization, that's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and these would be uh, Bitcoin kitties. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, the other thing, too, I maybe I can talk about this. Like I've been looking at the uh, one sat ordinals. Um, and I would love to, and you know, uh, oh, no worry, either you are. Like, I would love to have um, one set ordinals, um, you know, the, the cats being able to show up on the other markets. Um, that's something uh -huh. that I need to kind of think about, like, how that would work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So, it's that what I learned in London from Kane, who works with the Stas token is mm -hmm. that the stas token is integrating as well with one sat ordinals or with oh, okay. this protocol so that it's as though if you take a plate at a buffet and then you put on your plate what you want and then you can hand it to your family <clears throat> so hmm. if you're going to fix a plate at the barbecue and hand it to someone that's like the stas token on ordinals you have that creativity you can do so i'm assuming that you could do that with the molly match with your yeah. mollies your kitty cats you could put it on the plate or the the token and then hand it out in different arenas i guess in different marketplaces 
Right. Yeah. Cause I think, cause once that, um, that is just, it's spending once that, you know, it's a, we call it, um, I don't know if you call it a UTXO, maybe that would be mm -hmm. it, but like it would, it would be in there, you know? And, oh and, yeah. Yeah. Cause it should be easy. Like we just throw, probably just throw that data in there. And if people want to look at that, you know, or if we want them to display it on like the, like a market, then it should show up on everyone's, you know, market. But um, I would love to do that because that looks like it's kind of um, that might, you know, that looks like a standard to me in a way, like everyone's wanting to use one set for, mm -hmm. um, for BSV. Yeah, I think yeah. That, that, that is so exciting. All the one set ordinal stuff. Now I have to show you my new deck. This is a deck from um, Sato Learn. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. What I found after the shuffle. The stas. <laughs> yeah, look oh, at wow. that. It says the stas protocol creates smart contract based tokens and enforces token persistence with optimized minimal code size. And then on the back, what is a token actually? A token is simply a digital record of ownership on Bitcoin SV that is managed by a smart contract. Specifically, it is a digital ledger entry that records the ownership rights of a certain entity for a given asset and the subsequent changes of ownership over time to the Bitcoin SV ledger. So that would be, in my mind, I'm thinking like the uh, cat changing owners. Mm -hmm. It could be. Oh, I don't know. So. Maybe it's similar but unrelated so far, but you could somehow work together, but I yeah. want to give a shout out to our chat room, Marlena Carver. What's up, girl? <laughs> Oops, I dropped the Did you get that at the, at the VSV uh, conference or what? Yes, uh, Robin. <clears throat> Robin was, he gave me one. He gave me a deck of cards. I was so excited. Right. So now every day, you know, I like to turn over some cards like angel cards, oracle cards, uh, you know, tarot cards and um, what other? I have my um, Kabbalah cards and, you know, I love cards just to kind of mm -hmm. flip up for inspiration. So now in my routine, I have my Bitcoin SV cards. <laughs> nice. Look, I, can I like it. Proof of work. And they, they're learning cards. Yeah, that's so, good, yeah. Yeah, so far I learned you can about You pick one and learn a subject a day. It's like the perfect... Exactly. Do, so every day I learn and it's like it the way they describe it is so good. Um, it's just very clear. And yeah. Um, yeah, I learned about things that I had never heard of before, as well as uh, to go over, um, you know, things you've heard of, but mm -hmm. it's just said so succinctly and clearly. Yeah, I like their website. I remember you uh, taking... Like you know, their their course thing on there it was pretty cool. That's I like the cards though. That's uh, you got lucky with those. <laughs> I, I want know. some. <laughs> I know. Seriously, I just got so lucky. So I'm grateful. And um, oh look, here's a table of contents. So Sato Learn. I it seems think... like they're pretty big and good quality as well. Let's see. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yes. So welcome. Come over and we can we can play a card game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a learning card game. I was thinking maybe even we could do something in the live streams or each time we use a card mm -hmm. or recover a card or something like that. Yeah. Um, um, but anyway, enough about that. How about your cards, your Molly matches? Can we make a match right now or what can we do right now? <laughs> so we, yeah we can't do a match yet um the only thing that like what we're doing right now is um i can you know i can generate more cats um that's actually what i did last night so all the cats that you see um in my uh kitty corner the ones that are called uh genesis mollies those were just created um you know so i that's what we can do at the moment and then um and you can, you know, I can send a cat to somebody. So like if they, like if you create an account on, on mollymatch.com, um, you can send me a message and, you know, tell me what your handle is and I can send you a cat. 
um, for free. And, you know, because I, the first one's free. <laughs> Lucky. It's like the Bitcoin faucet. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, because that, because that's, uh, I, but I think, what would I say? Like, I think um, it's almost a week now, but within like next week is when we're going to launch the, uh, the matching. Um, and that's where all the, you know, the fun happens. <laughs> yes. So yeah. Let's and do in the market. Live stream and try it out so people can see. Yeah action yeah and for sure i'll probably be like asking you guys too like hey why don't you try <laughs> matching some cats to see if anything breaks <laughs> but no i'm pretty confident like this time it um we probably won't have any issues with that it's really just uh when um we're trying to capture data going out like like paypal um and you know because that's that so we like we're we have this thing called a, a lock so we lock our wallets whenever something is while well, it's in the process of doing something so like last night um when i generated those cats um it's taking money out of those wallets and so those wallets have to lock and it won't unlock until um that transaction's done so you got to kind of wait yeah. for the you know the confirmation and stuff um but yeah, like the, the matching part, that's, that's, it's, it's there. We just got to, you know, uh, turn it on and, you know, uh, I'm excited about that, but we also are um, kind of redesigning the website. Um, so it's a, a little bit easier to navigate, um, especially yeah. on, on mobile. Um, uh, yeah. The one thing, you know, it's funny, like I, I totally forgot to um, create the part where, uh, so like we're supposed to have thumbnails. Um, so you see these, you know, they see these cats, but that's actually like the full image size. So if I right click and uh, um, like a smaller version know, of it. Yeah, if I right click and open it, it's it's uh, becomes the full size, um, which is this. You know, so yeah. we're we're kind of using a lot of data that you know, like we're, I mean, not it's like nowadays it's not that big, you know, a lot of data, but it's it's a giant image, and so we're just shrinking it down, and that that will take a you know, especially if you're on cell phone data. Um, I, you know, I don't want to put people through that where they're using up their data on, on images to load. Um, but yeah, long story short, like I, I have to set up um, the uh, thumbnail thing where it generates a capture of the image to make it smaller. Um, and that's uh, through Image Magic, which is, it's a pretty cool program. It's been around for a while. Um, yeah. Is that the software? Um, yeah, I guess it's yes, yeah, software. It's open source. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people use it for um, NFTs, but they use it for a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, it's it you it runs on the back end, um, so it's a, yeah. it's another you know Python um, program. Um, a lot of computers like already have it installed. It just you know depends on on what you're doing with with images, um, and it's like it, it, it was usage right was driving me nuts because. Um, you can see like the cat has shading um, on, you know, the legs and under its neck mm -hmm. um, yeah. when so that that's a separate layer. So with image magic, um, it was making everything opaque. So like it wasn't transparent around the shading that was messing up the it was covering the collar. Um, and it was something actually simple that but what happened was image magic um took down their their forms or their old <laughs> and so i couldn't find you know i was like trying to find out what this um this problem was and um they just happened to uh reopen those forms and then i you know and it, it's a, it's just called it all it is is just called um uh, multiply which is a a thing that you do in um image programs like photoshop when you're mm -hmm. playing with layers um i just didn't have that enabled <laughs> and so you know it's just funny it's always something simple you know that that you're missing um but and yeah is like, that the name image magic have I uh, yeah so it's got a little different it's a uh, ma let's see image magic right with a ck on the end ah okay like that let me see um there's other um i try to remember what it's called it's like a i think it's also a library it's called pello um for hmm. python and that i don't remember if that uses image magic so like i'm trying to i don't know how to explain it um it's so we have a script in python for image magic to put all the you know the pictures together um 
And I think we're kind of do we're doing it in a kind of like a, a way that we shouldn't, where it's running this long script. Um, so there's something called Pello that integrates that with um, the the back end part. And I that part I can't, you know, I that's what we're that's another thing we're we're kind of moving over to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like it, there's you know we we don't have problems with with that. It's just to, just to make it a little faster and. Um, because we're, you know, we, we're paying server bills. Uh, so it's actually pill, uh, sorry, pill, pillow, like the, the pillow that you put your, your head on. Oh, a pillow. Like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just thought, like, I've never heard of it before until after. Oh, pain. And all this. Okay. <laughs> so pillow, just P-I-L-L-O-W? Yep. That's the name of the library? Yeah, the there's software? that. That's the, the library. Um and then there's another one called Wand, um, W-A-N-D. So we're wow. debating between those two to um, just kind of switch over for the, the how we put the images together. Um, the, the thing too, I, to, I forgot to mention is like the when the two adult cats, you know, when you, when you pair them um, and you have a kitten, you'll have like a cute little kitten for a bit. So a kitten yeah, what? A little kitten picture. Mm -hmm. um when you, when you, when you made them yeah as a kitten and then that will you know then eventually they'll change and turn into like an adult cat like you have <laughs> really? that's incredible <laughs> so you know nfts they're okay they say non-fungible tokens i know you've defined it before very clearly um but how can they change typically um, <laughs> an NFT is like an adobe file where it's stuck uh -huh. Well, for for us, um, it's because we, you know, we don't put those images on the blockchain, you know. So that's why that's why we're able to manipulate them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like the, like the typical like BSV NFT, those are on chain because you know that can be done. Um, and then you know you see you are seeing that in like the the BTC ordinals where they figure out how to put those images up on chain, um, which you know to me that's kind of inefficient and expensive um but you know there's people want to do that they want to spend money on um you know on btc nfts and mm -hmm. but um you know like the the cats you know you, you can see their data on chain um and uh i actually was thinking about that where we may put some kind of option up where the person can um put that cat up but the thing is, is like we we are manipulating stuff with the cats. So um I, you know, they they can't be up, you know, up on chain, but maybe we can have it where you have like a little, maybe like a photo album. So you have your current cat that's up on, on chain as a photo album. Um, and then, you know, then you have like your little home area where you have your, you know, your actual cat where stuff will happen to it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's something. Yeah, maybe that I could do that because I, I do know like a lot of people, that that is important. Like having um, your image up on chain, um, you know that that's a big thing that people want. Um, but yeah, like but, I, I know that's the only thing we don't. <laughs> the point that in the world of NFTs, in the yeah. mainstream, those are not on chain. <laughs> yeah, I forget, yeah, all absolutely. those popular yeah. ones were never put on. Chain. You're right. Yeah. Did we yeah. answer that that question? Uh, Marlena had a question oh, about a question. if they made the if she made an account a long time ago, will it still be active? I'm, I'm thinking so, yeah. but yeah, yeah. If you um if you don't yeah, so crypto counts it. So like if you can't log in, there's a password reset um for the email. Now if you don't remember your email, um I can you know either just make a new account and then um just contact mm -hmm. me and I can send you your cat. Um, there was yeah one person that that happened where they they forgot their password and their what email they put in there um, that we we worked it out. You just you know send me a message on on Twitter. Um, oh yeah, like you're what you were talking about with uh with other NFTs. Yeah, like there's like IPFS for um like Ethereum and stuff. So you're right, like not everyone. <laughs> the uh, the the more expensive stuff like is you know not on chain. So mm -hmm. <laughs> right, that's kind of. What are the, the scene, what's in the scene, what we've seen already. And then there were NFTs like Duro Dogs. I guess those are on chain. Yeah, not. you're right. It's uh, they? They, They're hard to, to really look up. And so, like, same with Relay X NFTs. 
right, right. Um, I remember they were kind of hard to like, you know, track down on on um, like the blockchain chain browser. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's been. I mean, that was in the beginning when I just started UNB, using BSV. So maybe I was just looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just remember. Um, yeah, Duradox is pretty cool though. Like they have. I like how you can add different items to them and um they right. you know they're they're the first mm -hmm. that did this and we have we have some demand marlena <laughs> ray can i have a kitty please my handle is crypto countess i can do that let me see if i can do it right now actually with uh Ooh, you know. i won't show that i won't share this part because it will you know, I don't want to dis display um, all the accounts. Of course. <laughs> no worries. We'll just enjoy the cute cat. <laughs> cat pictures. Yes. So back when, Ray, you helped me make my first NFT, I was inspired yeah. when I saw a rare snowman in Atlanta. And so I went on Relay X and made a rare snowman picture yeah. and then i said it needs a hat scarf um and you know other props other accessories mm -hmm. and i was hoping that then people could take it and add to it but in fact they couldn't because it's know. as it is it's on the blockchain and it is just that picture of that rare snowman uh, so is that something that can emerge where NFTs can have layers added on? Um, yeah, so I think, you know, you remember the Gopniks with uh, RelayX, they um, did something like that, right? Where they could mm -hmm. change some things where like you would get a rug and then it would turn into a, you know, a Gopnik. Yeah, and then um, I, I, I that that's the part I don't really know, you know, like how, um, how they did that. But I'm assuming, you know, every single, you know, all that's probably still on on chain. Um, but I don't know if it's like, you know, easy to find or not. So let me see, what cat did I name? I named it Avatar. So I maybe I can send that one. Oh, good idea. Her. And I see Sylvain has about five minutes before he has to go. So Sylvain, I wanted to ask you, what's on your mind these days? You always bring up the latest in the news. So what's on your radar this week or this month? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, well, I've been busy on my end as well with work and so on, and I haven't done a whole lot of french podcasting or anything like that but i'm always trying to stay on track with most of the news i think we're still seeing the effect of kind of regulations for some you know big or bigger exchanges like binance and a lot of that stuff they're getting their finance you know their banks cut and access to i don't know is it like liquidity and so on so there's a lot of stuff happening in the background when it comes to this with the security thing you know a bunch of cryptos were in security so that the name security or insecurity whatever you want to call it <laughs> <laughs> insecure over their security yeah. status and then yeah there's a big i guess like a big fight going on so it'll be interesting to see uh um i mean bsv wise i think it was uh, a bit more quiet i think uh, after the the conference obviously but uh, I think there's still quite a few projects that are uh, doing good. And Cash is uh, doing well still. So, mm -hmm. you know, they had a bit of a down at some point with, uh, you know, when they had that thing with Circle, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, the, uh, the onboarding, offboarding and so on with mm -hmm. Circle, I think. And, you know, it took them a bit to uh, to come up with different solutions. Now, I think they're looking into, um, I think they've paused their uh, gift cards and other things like I think the, the buying with uh, fiat money, I think, because uh, mm -hmm. of I think regulations probably they have to look at other like their term of service and, and so on. So I think that's there's a lot of that subject in the news overall. Like it seems like regulations starting to affect quite a few 
either exchanges, crypto, or projects, you name it. So yeah, it's kind of what I've been been following uh, really uh, recently about what's to, to last over the, the few years and what's going to maybe have issues soon. But even then, you know, it, it depends on the government and it doesn't seem clear either if, coming from their, asp- their point of view. Like, I think they want to put regulations, but they don't think, I don't think they know what they're going to, they want to do either. So it's kind of a, I don't know. So yeah, there's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, besides that, yeah, I've been pretty busy, so I, I probably don't mm-hmm. didn't cover like the the, the latest news, but uh, <laughs> it, w- it would take a bit longer than, than it would in a few minutes. A few minutes. Uh, You're right. But but for people maybe like look into the the <clears throat> all the regulation aspect, exchanges don't keep money on your on the exchanges because a lot of different exchanges are going down now and. They're probably going to mm-hmm. go down with your funds in it as well. So, right? Yeah, I was oh. I was worried about that. I actually sold some of my stuff on Coinbase just when the first time I saw their name mentioned. Um, yeah, you know, which I I don't think that would happen, but just in case, I like you know I did. I sold some uh, some of the crypto that I had. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and and uh, money button that just uh, shut down. I think three yeah. days ago. Yeah, did you get your stuff out? I didn't follow you. Yeah, I did, and I, I moved did. it into uh, Tokenize, which looks pretty good so far. Did you? I, I See, I should have done that. To do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was, uh, I thought initially it was more like Tokenize, like more like business-related services, but it seems like there was a way to create just a regular wallet, so that's what I did. Oh, and, yeah. Um, so I still need I, I'll to give it a try. It seems pretty good. It seems like they have like projects with... Uh, with gold now, Troy ounce or whatever. Um, oh. That even Ancash was applauding th- this week, so they might look into that as well. Oh, wow. uh, so cool! Is look, that look tokenized.io or is it .com? Um, Let me see. What is it? Um, tokenize. I probably have it in my. Uh, it's. Um, I retweeted the tweet, and then I thought, "Oh, I'm going to do that later." It's yeah, it's right. tokenized.com, yeah. Dot .com. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, they're so, a pretty yeah. uh, uh they're very active and like if you ask questions yeah. on I think on Twitter they respond. Mhm. Yeah, and it's pretty yeah. secure too cuz what happens is, and what I've done is I you download the desktop uh, app that's going to be your actual wallet but it's also the uh the cell phone uh, the mobile application which you have to tie in and, and it ensures like uh, so once you try to log in your desktop version, then you need to also accept on your phone. So it's kind of a double security thing where that could be an option. We always talk about like maybe there's not like a whole lot of, you know, like uh, cold wallets in BSV and there's mm-hmm. a couple of ways, I guess, of doing it. But that's kind of a maybe more secure. I don't know if that's proven, uh, like, you know, like if people try to hack it or some reason, but it seems like there's a, like at least a double or added security to it because you get to access it through mobile as well. You get to yeah. uh, accept the request to, you know. So if someone ex- is trying to access your wallet, I guess uh, you would, you could, I guess, deny it if there's, but I'm hmm. not sure how that works. Like uh, maybe, um, what's his name again? Uh, running James? Yeah, I think so. Richard? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you could probably answer the question. The the you could mm-hmm. probably answer that better. Than, yeah, he's than great. Me, but... I've seen a lot of his speeches. He is such yeah. a good public speaker too. There are yeah. so many good public speakers in BSV, like that uh, Ty Everett, and then I recently interviewed Rohan Shar- yeah. Sharan, and um, it was amazing. Just uh, so many of these people involved in the space. Yeah. Uh, they're brilliant. So um, we're real fortunate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's James Belding. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that's what, yeah. Okay. We tokenized. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, Marlena, did you send the 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 cat, the Molly to? Yeah. Marlena? I sent her the cat. And then now you can see her. Who's her handle? <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing, too, like you can look at, you can track down people. Like here's the. Um, the TXID, and you could track down all the cats that we have and, and kind of like paste it into here to mollymatch.com. 
um, to see other people's NFTs if you wanted. Um, but we, that was the thing too. Like I wanted to be able to make it public so you can, you know, if you're trying to sell like some traits of your, like, like you're trying to stud your cat, um, people can pay you to do that. Um, that's a, that's another feature when, with the matching. Um, so stud your cat. That means. Yeah. To <laughs> yeah so your like. Cat be the parent. Yeah. This be the parent. So like you okay. can, um, with matching, you can, um, you'll own two cats and create a kitten. Um, with the marketplace, the market is where you can decide to stud your cat or just put it up for sale. So people ah. can pay you a certain amount of money to um, just mate your cat, you know, to have a kitten. Um, the person that's paying will get the kitten, not the not the person putting their cat up for stud. Um, so that will be it will be interesting, to, you know, to see all that go. And um, the what was your, uh, the other thing I was going to mention too? Um, when you create an account, uh, you do have a BSV wallet. Um, and that's we we will make that more um usable you know later down the road where you can send money to it and stuff um right now you, you know like you, you can't even see it unless you um track it down on on the blockchain browser by you know like through your cat you can see your your wallet um address that way but eventually we'll have it where you can um you know like if you wanted to you we could transfer your wallet somewhere else um but the cat you know you can't see your cat unless you're on our mm -hmm on our site that way all right yeah awesome well i'm gonna get going but it was awesome to be with you too uh on the live stream uh we'll talk soon i'm sure and uh yeah keep up the good work with uh the, the mollies and and so on yeah yeah thank you all right thanks. have a good one cheers Bye. thanks sylvain up loose <laughs> have fun on your day off yeah and thank you yes <laughs> Uh, Ray, I see here from Marlena, she says, thank you, Ray. She's so pretty. Oh, she Since got it. Got got it. it. Yes. <laughs> That's fun. So I know that we do, we like to keep it the live stream to an hour, but I am curious about that conference, GDEX. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the highlights? Can you give us, do you have any pictures you could show us of the GDEX conference? Yeah, let me see what I have. Um, most most of it's on Twitter. So let me, I'll post the, the link here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll look, cause I, I was doing kind of like a end of the day update, just, you know, just to remember what I did. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go to my profile and find it. One of the cool things about GDX is like they, um, there's something called, I think extra life and it's like a fundraiser. And so, what happens uh video gamers will uh play and then people will donate money um you know to the the city of uh the one life and what i think they partner with um uh the like nationwide children's hospital um or different different children's hospitals all over the the united states oh wow um yeah so we have here, yeah, here's, it's called Extra Life for Kids. So I'll, I'll just post the Twitter link um, in here. Actually, no, I could just share it. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, share Maybe, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just share the page. I'm just showing the main website of GDEX. Yeah. So folks can see, this is where you exhibited and launched mollymatch.com. Yeah, so we launched it. They have vendor tables. Um, so like, the uh i'm trying to remember the guy's name he had a really cool talk about how um he got into you know game development um and he actually is one of the people that runs um these events uh so he, a lot of states will have their own type of indie video game convention um the one for ohio um and columbus is called gdex um and it is what it is there's a lot of like small gaming groups that want to create their own video game and then they um will uh you know show them off at these type of conventions um what's really special about this uh this one gdex is that it's inside of another convention called origins um mm. which is i think like the second largest uh board game convention um you've, if you ever heard of magic the gathering uh, the card game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it used to be, be it used to be owned by wizards of the coast um this mm -hmm. origins and then it 
I think it got bought by somebody else, you know, to, to run it. Um, but it's the place where people go to um, try out like newly published board games. Um, and it's also a place for uh, people who want to be published. Like they, they create a board game and then they want to try to find a, a publisher to, to um, you know, print their games for them. Um, they have a lot of, comp yeah, it's pretty cool. They have a lot of competitions and it's a fun place to um, try out like games that you, because some of these games are like 35 bucks and up. Um, so some of them can get a bit expensive if you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's uh, yeah, Tim Tim Collins. That's the guy that um, does a lot of like the uh, uh, like investor and, and helps with um, running. Uh, it's called a game jam, um, global game jam. Um, Ooh, cool. Yeah, so he he does that. Uh, he he started in the '90s um, working for different video game companies and was talking about like his his experiences. So um, neat, a, pretty cool. Um, the, there's another guy named, uh, Ab Abdullah Smash. Um, he's a YouTuber, um, for like family friendly videos and he does, uh, how to's on how to, you know, go through like, uh, most of them are, I think, Nintendo games. So he'll, he, uh, he played Super Smash Brothers with my daughter <laughs> and, uh, oh you know, it was, it was cute. Let me, find, let me find a picture. Yeah. Um, let me, I saw him just a second ago. Yeah. He was like one of the main, um. Yeah, here it is. Like, uh, okay, I see him here. Yeah, him right there. And then I can share my screen and show you the picture too, yeah. if you want. Okay, let me stop sharing, and then click back. Here we are. Okay, I see yours. I you got it. Okay, so then it's perfect. Yes. Yeah, this one right here. Um, and it's interesting because like you pay him five bucks <gasps> to play a game with him <laughs> uh, great. and then uh, yeah and then like he tells you like how to um, like different thing like button combinations to do um, mm -hmm. so a lot of kids like to watch it <laughs> he had a lot of um, fans like just all kinds of ages you mm -hmm. know so it was neat to see all these people show up and um, and they brought like some business to my table <laughs> you know while they're sure. waiting in line um, oh, so your table was near to his? Yeah, so we were just across, so like we could just like you know see him over there. Um, sure. And the other thing too, like we had a uh, we had a really cool view um, of the event because there there was like a lot of tournaments happening. So this one, um, this one wasn't as big, but like all these chairs were full, um, mm -hmm. and people were playing like a, some kind of wrestling game. Um, Ooh. And they had like special models that they created to um, uh, show off like the the people that are playing and the uh, the Ab Abdallah Smash um, he was one of the people and they're playing it um, and this one was like, my favorite table that I, so like I walked around and like tried to see everything um, so like uh, you, it's hard to tell. <laughs> So these, these are really old TVs and um, th this is a group of people that create their own um, ROMs and up there on top of that TV is a, uh, a bunch of NES cartridges and um, Super Nintendo cartridges. Oh, I see And that. they um, created those themselves. They like soldered everything and um, they, make, they make their own video games that work on these old systems, which no I think is way. neat. <laughs> And then their main thing was something called, um, it was something silly. It was like a wrestling RPG game that um, looks like something you'd play on the, on the Super Nintendo. And it looked kind of fun. Um, I played a weird game called, uh, what was it? Uh, Meet something, The Meeting. And it was kind of gross. It was like you're walking through a, like a meat locker. <laughs> but it was like a little platformer. Oh, but it was just right. you know, it, it, but it's it's very uh, creative, like how they were able to do this. And I talked to them about like how do you guys so because they stop, they, everyone stops to each other's table, so they they went down to my table, mm -hmm. um, and I was asking them like how like what makes the most money for you guys because um, a lot of these people that publish they publish on Steam, um, mm -hmm. and then some of them will even have games on you know the Apple Store and. Um, they, you know, a lot of those companies take like 30% of their profits of all their, okay. you know, stuff. Yeah. Apple Store and Steam. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's kind of high. Um, and they said what makes them the most money is um, having like, they, they have a, a, like Kickstarter. So like they'll make a Kickstarter 
And then they have a group of fans that, you know, will throw down money for them. And then that helps them um, fund their ability to, you know, create more higher quality games to publish onto um, the app store, you know, and, um, and steam. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a big commitment. You know, these people work, um, long hours just to, you know, create a video game. Cause there's, you know, there's an art to it where, you know, they, they have something they want to like people to, to, you know, like a story to try. Um, the, the people that I, that was beside me, uh, they were, their, their game was called, um, uh, what was it? Something roman something it was like a survival horror game it was like a it, they they started off of an older system like the the playstation oh look there you are uh, yeah yeah that's my, it was, you click on your that was oh that's i think okay. the, <laughs> that was like the first day oh. so we um yeah Mom, she yeah. my daughter was very happy she like uh she was um helping out with like signing people up and um renaming their um their mollies for them um Beer. yeah and this, so this is the video that we played um on the table oh, the whole it. time and it's <laughs> i don't know that music plays oh. so the artist made this for me she made the um the the music <laughs> i love it oh and then that's like near the end of it I love yeah, that. she she made that. I was excited to like have something ready. Um, so I'm trying to find the yeah. other vendors that that I was talking about. Um, oh, it was this one. So like it was it's called um, Greek Tragedy, and she probably should have been playing this because it's like a there's like you know blood and stuff in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I, I was she was fine. Like uh, it was like a puzzle game, kind of based off of like uh, older games like Silent Hill and um, you know Resident Evil. But they a lot of these developers um, have artists from the Ukraine, and which I had no idea. So like they yeah they and um, so they ended up having to scramble like during the whole like Russian war. Um, with Ukraine because these artists had to go like, you know, drop what they were doing and go, you know, like hide or, or leave the ground. Right, go down um, the shelter. Yeah, so they were telling me how like their artists actually moved and somehow was able to move to the United States and was able, they were able to complete their game by, by G-Deck starting. Um, and then the other people that were um, doing those NES games, um, they were also telling me how they, um, uh, yeah, th this one, uh, they have, I think, like a thousand people in their group that come and go, but a lot of them are from the Ukraine um, that really? are, yeah, programmers and artists, which I, I that was the first time I ever heard about that. Wow. Um, just because they, you know, all these people want, they, they're, a lot of the times, like, they, they have to get stuff published in a certain amount of time. Um, you know, they have, like, a timeline or a time frame to get this stuff done. So they they do a lot of outsourcing <laughs> to mm -hmm. um, you know to get that help for sure. And yeah. what I like about this conference is that it's to say it sound cliche for gamers by gamers. Yeah. So the concept of gamers making games, I love that. I think that's so important for people to play games together and then to also make the games you want to play or mm -hmm. just make games. Maybe no one wants to play them. Maybe you don't want to play them, but maybe you just make them. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, and then you can um, incorporate, like, so like, say you're you're not a programmer, but you really want to know how a game's made. Um, you would go to a place like this and you can find a group and um, help them in some way to, um, you know, to be there to kind of watch how a game's created. And, uh, and then the other thing too, like that really drives these these conventions is uh, this one, the um, the extra life uh, uh, fundraiser. Um, like so, people will you know donate money and they get a raffle ticket. And so my daughter was helping um, grab you know grabbing the the name the ticket to um, announce who won something. Um, but that that draws in a lot of um, a lot of don donations for that. And I think what they do is they they. Um, help i think like pay for um children's like the the bills and stuff or the the surgeries and, and things they have to have to go through pretty much anything that they need they need help with 
Wow. Um, so that's what I love about that. Wow. That's meaningful. That's great. Yeah, and yeah. also the children probably while they're recuperating can play video games. Possibly. Yes. Maybe. And I some... think they do that. I think they, um, they will like do live streams, you know, from, mm -hmm. from some of those places or some of those places. It just depends on what, um, what the, you know, convention set up. But yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. But yeah, I think that that was the last day. So we, you know, we, we had a lot of fun. We um, learned a lot with how other, you know, groups do this. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of questions about, um, cause like we're, you know, we're in the stage of building the, the actual game. Um, but we want it to be easy for everyone to build it, access it. So like you can play it through your web browser. Um, so we were asking questions about that because a lot of people have, um, they're either either using something called Unity, which is a um, like a game engine. Um, I believe that comes from the people that created Quake um, or like or yeah, the Unreal, Unreal Engine. Um, and then there's some other ones I've never heard of before that I got to actually look through my notes again. Um, mm -hmm. But there's some new stuff that kind of popped up. Um, which I, you know, I think that's nice because that that gives that just creates more like accessibility for everybody, where um, you don't have to know how to do, you know, a certain programming. Um, you can have like a tool that will help you with that. Um, yeah, the bigger thing is being able to get your game on all these different systems. So um, I think for us though, it's just going to be through the web browser. That's the easiest way to, um, you know, to for everyone to play it. But yeah, but anyway, I, I'm excited, you know, that we got this launched and that I was able to talk to you about it. You're like the, you know, the first person to to really get to see everything. And um, thank you. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yes. And I think it is super interesting about games and how you went to this GDEX conference, which is a tabletop gaming conference with Origins. And then it's the video game aspect of the overall gaming conference. And that this is a really good idea for all of us in the Bitcoin ecosystem, BSV blockchain, to go exhibit, go participate mm -hmm. and exhibit at more gaming conferences in our local areas and even host a booth like you did. Um, maybe we could all be, you know, the hosting Molly Match booths or Duro Dog booths or even Haste Arcade booths or some mm -hmm. kind of Bitcade. We could do Bitcades at all of these conferences that would be yeah really that would be fun. nice to see because I, I thought about that with uh because you got like the citadel in florida mm -hmm. that um they have the bitcade um stuff um yeah and with this conference like i i, I guess i could talk about that a little bit where yes, please. um a lot of people didn't really care that stuff was you know like these cats were in nft mm -hmm. um they they have heard about nfts but they didn't really have like a strong opinion either you know either way it was more about like can I play this? <laughs> and so they liked the idea of me just sending them a, a cat when they, they signed up, you know, mm -hmm. on the account. Um, and the other thing too, a lot of people, like I would get a lot of stories where I had some families tell me how like they were, um, you know, allergic to pets. So, you know, this is a way for them to have a, a cat, you know, in a special way. So, I was, you know, that was really cute. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Idea. And I know pet games are popular. Yes. Because, you know, people have pets and, there's even remember chia pets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the little chia pet. Yeah, that like I um I had a lot of I have a lot of tamagotchis. Um, yeah. they uh the really big one that's cute. I uh it's called Nintendo Dogs, and then um you can raise a little puppy on your mm -hmm. Nintendo, um or Nintendo DS, and then they also have cats in it too that you could, you know, play with. Um. But uh, but yeah, like it was that was something I that kind of threw me off. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, if you're allergic to an animal, um, and you like them, like that's that's a way to to kind of feel like you have you know something special with a with a, a cat. <laughs> right. It is fun, and um, I just think you know we have Dragon Con in Atlanta, which I mm -hmm. think is mostly a cosplay event. I don't think I don't know. I've never been. Because yeah, it's a massive I, crowd. <laughs> it is gigantic. I remember yeah. um, I had a friend that is into a uh, certain uh, comic book artist, and mm -hmm. I'm uh, I wish I'd like remembered the name of the guy, but um, 
he 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 drew really pretty like fantasy art and it was this uh it was a woman of like red hair and or it might be oh i think i know uh, dawn i think is the name of it um he he was a big artist that would be that was there every year and i believe they had the cosplay event where if you you would dress up as dawn and whoever that has like the best costume you know wins that that year <laughs> but yeah that's that's a huge place like i would recommend going just for the experience you know and um maybe just hang out like you know on a chair like away from everybody <laughs> i guess it's so yeah, really sure. super crowded <laughs> So I think so. I'm going to seek out more of these gaming places just to explore. And um, I, I like playing games, but mm -hmm. I, it's been a long time since. I mean, I played games as a kid mostly. Yeah. And so it's good to get back into the gamer world. Yeah, it's a fun way to just kind of like... Um, you know, for me, it's to kind of relax. Um, but I just, you know, I, I haven't played a lot of games lately. Like I, I'll, I'll start something and then I just never finish it. <laughs> like right. there was uh, the new Zelda game came out and I, I bought that. <laughs> yeah, I played it. It's really pretty, um, yeah. but it's it's different than what you know I'm used to on um, some of the older games, like on the Nintendo 64. That's where I, I really played them. Um, this game to me felt like more of a chore. <laughs> You know, oh, but it's because yeah. I, it's because I'm just busy, you know, that's really what it is. It's, <laughs> yes. but yeah. <laughs> well, I think that as, you know, I went to the London blockchain conference uh, back earlier this month and it was wonderful because everybody met up, but we were all so busy that it's like every moment you were missing something. You were, yeah. you were connecting and you were also missing something else. So we were all thinking, oh, there's more I want to see. <laughs> but I think the more that we can gather and play games together, that would be fun. Um, yeah, that would be. We could meet, we could have, um, you know, just times when we all meet up and we play games or whether that's online or in person, uh, mm -hmm. book conferences. I think being in person and playing together is um, really meaningful. Too. Yeah, I prefer that too because you get to kind of uh, um, I feel like you're kind of decompressing, you know, like mm -hmm. when you're in front of a computer that you know you, you still have like also like I'm here because there's a lot of work I'm doing on my computer, you know, compared to just sitting around a group of people, you're away from that, and you know, like you can have your phone with you, but you know, yeah, it's totally different than um, you know, playing online games because you're in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, oh, I should be doing this other thing, <laughs> right. you know, than than playing. Um, yeah, I would, I would love, like, we need to convince Kurt and just, you know, go down there and um, yeah, have a little game with it. <laughs> Good idea. And he recently at the Bitcoin Florida Citadel meetup, they had, they invited families. And yeah, so I saw that. And they playing with games, taste arcade <laughs> games. So I love that. That's just really fun. And um, yeah, let's do it. We'll plan our road trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to, yeah, I need to go down there um, when it's a little bit colder. <laughs> right now, yeah, I, I can't do heat. I know, like, you're probably, you're used to that a little bit with the, where, you know, where you're at. Yeah, um, it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> right now, yeah, like, it's, uh, it's been in, in the 80s and stuff up in Ohio, but, like, once there's, um, when there's rain, it just, it's kind of miserable. <laughs> oh, really? With all the yeah, humidity and hot. stuff. Oh, you know what I would love to do is come up there and let's go to Cedar Point. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been to Cedar Point? I grew up every summer. You, oh my, my God. Okay. Yes. So, Cedar and what's Point the, what's probably the last coaster you were on? Maybe like the Raptor? I yeah, think, I think that, that was there. Uh, the Magnum. Yeah, the Magnum. That was, uh, that's a scary one. Like, <laughs> Yeah. When you sit in that thing, like you feel like you're being lifted out of the seat sometimes, you know, like just depending yeah. on like where you're at in it. Um, there's also Kings Island. That one, um, that one's different. <laughs> mm -hmm. They have a Kings Island, I think has a better Halloween um, event compared to Cedar Point. But because I used to go to see the Halloween events there um, because they, they have um, the fun thing too. Like if you're in, well, like if you like um, animation, they have a lot of um, Hanna Barbera, car you know, cartoons stuff there oh. um, for uh, King Island. 
I like the Flintstones, the oh. Scooby Doo. So they they have a cute uh, Scooby Doo um, ride thing that's like you hold laser guns and you like shoot at things. And <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. They um, yeah, I, I hope it's probably still there. Um, it's been years though since I went up there. Like the, the yeah, like I realized like probably like near when in my when I was in my thirties, um, I rode uh, the Millennium um, Force at Cedar Point. Oh, right. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can't do this again. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's a cool, uh, that's a really um, smooth roller coaster, though. It's just, it's, it's super it. high up. I, I hate, I'm not a fan of heights. <laughs> yeah, I love Cedar Point roller coasters. And one, you know, classics, even in Atlanta at Six Flags, we have the mine train. Oh, yeah. And I do always love a mine train. And then also the log ride. You know, oh, those are fun too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Cedar, so good Cedar Point idea. has a, a water oh, park too, I think. Yeah. So uh, like it's but Cedar Point has a water water park too. Um there's oh. something called I think Snake River Falls. That's mm -hmm. like one of their uh, tallest um water rides. So like you just go straight down, <laughs> you know, in like a little like uh seated thing, you know, and you get you know very wet. Um, but yeah, I, um, a lot of friends that I had when I was, um, in elementary school, they would drive to, um, Six Flags, uh, and, uh, what's the other one? Mo uh, Knott's Berry Farms. Um, I think that was also kind of like an amusement park. Um, but because they're so used to being around, you know, going to Cedar Point all the time, they would go to the other, other places. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I think Cedar Point is the best. I always yeah. have heard that and said that. <laughs> yeah, and it, it has a big yeah. arcade too. Um, mm -hmm. There, like, did you ever go on the wooden roller coasters, like yeah. uh, the Gemini and the Gemini? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that one's because that's like two roller coasters, but they, uh, I think, they go the opposite way or something. Um, and the other one's a uh, Blue Streak. Mm -hmm. That's one of their, I think, their first roller coaster, wooden roller coasters. Um, and I think that one also has like two different coasters side by side um, that, you know, kind of made it special. I mean, yeah, they, they have so many things every year. And then um, the they do. one of my favorite things from childhood was going there to the Bernstein Bears land. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> my, I, um, I remember my brother. Um, Did he go? He was pretty young, though, like because we're he's seven years younger than me. Uh -huh. um but he he went to that part and then yeah, yeah so, so they have a lot of keys up <laughs> talk on the phone with the Berenstein bears oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think now um at least when he when we were younger um they had a lot of snoopy stuff so oh. like uh the, the peanuts uh characters mm -hmm. um for like the kids area um I don't know if that's you know still there off the i i need to take my kid there soon i just i i like, it's just so weird how, like, stuff changed where I get, um, like, motion sick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. Can you believe our family <laughs> going on them with us? Um, but I think it would be fun to take a truck up to Cedar Point to investigate how have the games changed. Yeah. I, my dad would throw the hula hoops and the rings around the bottles to win the prize. And I wonder how they've digitized those games or if they have it all. I'm sure they have. Mm -hmm. I bet, yeah, they have to have those still. You know, you can't get rid of those. <laughs> right. Yeah, all those playful games. So, yeah, there's a lot of fun to be had. And, like, I'll look out for more game conferences, too, and, and show up. And we'll try to have more meetups, you know, near. Yeah, I would love to do wherever that. Wherever we can. Mm -hmm. And I think the big thing is when I've met people at these conferences, I've been amazed at how tall everybody is. <laughs> like John Pitts is super tall. Like Kurt <laughs> and Connor. And I met Todd Price. You know, Todd Price mm -hmm. has been my guest. And when we all meet online, we're sitting. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody looks about the same height. But in person, oh my gosh, it's like, <laughs> a beanstalk. How know? tall are you? Are you like five one? No, I'm you... like well five two. Oh, okay, we're you and I are about the same height. Like I'm five exactly. one, so I'm I'm kind of short, but yeah, um, yeah, that is <laughs> that is funny. You're right because like you don't see anybody when you're you know doing a video call, <laughs> right? And when you see everyone on video, you think, oh yeah, you know, we're face to face. 
when you're in person, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, <laughs> yeah, what's her name? Um, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca's the one that does a lot of the interviews. I think she's pretty short too, isn't she? Yes, she is. <laughs> so it's, it's funny seeing her like with uh, with Kurt because the the bat like the huge difference of yeah, <laughs> exactly. And also, I met Krez, and Krez is also similar in height to us. Who is that? Um, someone from Bitcoin Association or? Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so when everyone sees her online, they think, oh, wow, well, she's really tall. But then, <laughs> like, the same height as us. And yeah. also, I saw Ruth Eastman, and she's, mm -hmm. she's taller than me, I think. So she's a little bit taller. But it's, you know, pretty. That is funny. I picture her as someone short, you know, like, yes. like all right. <laughs> right. But a lot of people were really tall and that impressed me a lot. I thought, wow, you, when you meet in person, you just, yeah, all these simple things, they leave a big impression. <laughs> you have a lot of new friends that can help reach stuff off the shelf for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so yes. thank well, thanks you. for having me on. <laughs> Yes, and thank you for being in the moment. Everyone, let me get out the banner. You can go direct to mollymatch.com and mint your own Molly today. Let me find the banner. Oh, let's see. I had so many banners up. Okay, there it is. Yes, so if you go to Molly Match today, then you will be one of the lucky Genesis cat catchers. Uh, Ray will generously uh, give you a Molly match today. And that is June 29th, 2023. If you watch this later, still give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and maybe you'll knows? be in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, the promotion might be over with by then. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, we look forward to meeting again soon and matching the cats or the Mollies together to make some adorable kittens. So yep. thank you, Ray. Thank you everyone for watching. Okay, Keck, OG Keck9 and Marlena Carver. We see you in the chat and uh, welcome back soon y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, thank you. Oh, my pleasure.